Legend of Terrible here, and today we've got a Saving a Disaster Battle playing as Nakai the Wanderer going up against Rakath. And he's been caught in Force March, it's his only army, so he decided to be completely reckless as a horde faction around an anti-large beast killing faction, which was just, just so silly, god damn it. Now, this is not a doom stack, and to be reckless with this against a faction that's stronger than you, I, I don't know what to tell you, apart from you're not ready for legendary difficulty. Alright, we got to adjust some of these things. That should not be on a single entity. It's way better to put it on a unit of infantry because, like, it affects every single infantryman. If we have a look here, alright, its weapon strength is 25, right? And if we have a look at its armor piercing stuff, it's 5. So we double their armor piercing there. Whereas if I put it on Nakai, Nakai's armor piercing is already at 400. So it goes from 400 to 405. That's such a tiny percentage of, of strength increase. So much better to go into that. Uh, I will put the Banner of Eternal Flame on Nakai, though. Because um, he's going to be the center of what we're going to do. Uh, they do have Dark Conduit, which is going to be a problem. But we'd, we'll, we'll figure something out for that. Let's jump in here and see if we can manage to do this. Because if we lose this, it is game over. He can't run away. And he doesn't have any other armies. And, uh... You know what? It's probably doing him a favor by losing. Because <laughs> that way he doesn't have to play this campaign anymore. But... You know, he wouldn't have sent it in if he didn't want it saved. Or maybe he just wants me to suffer. One of the two, whichever one. Okay, so this map here, I think we can work fairly well for us. Um, let me teach you a little bit about Croxigors, right? It doesn't tell you here, and this is why I tell people not to trust this shit, but Croxigors are aquatic. And what that means is that aquatic units get a bonus when fighting in water. Uh, skinks are all aquatic, even if it doesn't say that. So if you have a look here, it says uh, shallow water provides melee defense 120%, melee attack 120%. Now, it's really important you understand how to interpret that because a lot of people, they read that and be like, wow, 120% boost? No, what it means is that your value will be 120% of whatever the starting value is. So it's actually a 20% buff, which is still pretty good. Same sort of thing as when you put a large unit in the forest, um, the melee attack 80%. Some people think that that's an 80% debuff, but it's actually a 20% debuff. It's just that Creative Assembly have not adequately communicated that. And part of the problem is, is that when you put a unit in the area, their stats don't change on the unit card which would be really helpful if they actually did that. And hopefully they'll do that in Warhammer 3, because I think they do that in Warhammer, uh, sorry, in uh, Troy, um, which is actually very useful to see as units get exhausted, you can see their speed go down and when they go into certain terrain, their stats change. You can actually see it on the stat cards. So that's definitely a quality of life improvement in Troy. Hopefully they'll, they'll put that over to Warhammer 3, but I haven't seen that yet. Anyway, what we're gonna do to begin with, yes, they've got a melee attack debuff in the forest. We wanna hide our troops to begin with. Don't worry, this isn't a case of spellcaster bullshit, because we can't do that. We don't have any good spellcasters. These heroes are like tier 1. Can't do much with them. What I want to do is just hide to begin with, so that we don't get shot by the artillery. What I want to do is leave these back here, and leave these over here. Their job is going to be to come in and take out the enemy artillery. This one is going to lure their army over here, and when they get to about in the center of the water, that's when we charge in. So it would, uh, it sucks that he got caught in Force March. Really, really sucks. Like if you're playing as a horde faction with your only army, you just, you just, a hundred percent under no circumstance should you Force March anywhere near enemies, which he absolutely did. So like. I gotta say, I don't think he's ready for legendary difficulty. But he definitely wasn't ready for this. He would have lost the campaign, straight up. But that's what we can do. I'm gonna give him a second chance, or hopefully give him a second chance in this campaign, um, and then hopefully he can learn from it. But no, there's absolutely no point in me fixing this for him and then just handing it back and him just making the same mistakes again. I guarantee you, he will lose this campaign. Guarantee it. Like, this guy's just not good enough to handle this campaign. It's not an easy campaign, and he made a colossally stupid move. But, you get a second chance, and maybe he can make something of it. We'll see. Well, like, I've screwed up Nakai campaigns before. Uh, I'd never lost a Nakai campaign, but man, I've had some bad starts. Okay, that's coming in over there. You guys come in. 
Okay, we've got five. Uh, why don't we heal that guy there? Because he's going to be pretty useful. Just wait. I, could, I could do a fireball or I could just shoot him. Another shot to anti large. Okay, um, let's go, 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 go. Into the water. Because we don't want to be fighting on the slopes here when I get into the water. The artillery is pretty close to getting wrecked. Here we go, here we go. And just charge in there. There's an explosive squig in there, but that's okay. That'll probably damage their own units, hopefully. Come on, get in there, get in there. You guys get in over here. Okay, cool. Dark Condor did a little bit of damage, but no casualties. We can heal that. And their artillery is gone. I think that's a good start for us there. And we want to pop down this ability on Nakai, giving everybody physical resistance and loads of extra melee attack. We want to pound down on this army as quickly as we can. Come on, get over here. Get over here. Some ogres there. Uh, okay, we've got some beast magic. That could be useful in this nice little blob there. But yeah, Nakai's ability is why we want to stay in a big blob. Uh, we've got some pretty bad leadership here, so... Try to pop this stuff down to put extra leadership. Come on, get over here. And heal as much as we can. I gotta get into melee with these fucking missile units here, because we're kind of pinned down at the moment. We can handle this stuff, but with getting shot, it's a bit of a problem. Okay, Chameleon Stalker's coming in. They're doing a good job, I think. Uh, maybe I should move just here. Just, because he's right in the center of it. Try to keep these guys from dying as much as possible. Okay, let's get these guys now. Push through and get at these missile units. Now they're pinned down. Push, push, push. Also helps to get a bit of extra charge bonus in there. Disability here. Cool. Keep healing. Coxagors aren't great against single entities here. Which is why I really want to focus on the infantry. Our guys are being a bit chicken shit. Nakai's still in good shape, which is good. Need him to be fighting the single entities, but you know, him just providing this buff here is almost good enough. Good, we've lured off all of their cavalry, uh, or their archers at least, and we're not getting shot so much. That's great. The odd dark conduit's probably going to come down. Can't really do that much about it, since we've got a melee. Okay, it was over here. That didn't do that much damage to us. Wasn't that bad. Keep these guys in the fight as long as possible. That's it. Okay, shades over there. Let's send these Croxagors to, to just. We really don't want them shooting at us. The ogres are giving us a little bit of a problem there. I think we're okay for now. Things are sort of calming down. How are you going here? Yeah, you come in over here, help against the ogres. Really needing a kind of thick of it. But. Yeah, him just providing this bonus here. That's a big bonus as well. That's why we want to. St don't get all spread out. Because it's not like we're going to break them. Proxical should be pretty good against the Shades Greatsword because they're anti infantry and we're anti infantry and we're large. And they're infantry. Uh, these guys here taking some damage. I think the Chameleon Stalkers did do a good job, but they've just, they've run out of puff. Yeah, come on. 
Get rid of these man eaters here. Oh, God, kills they got. Rakath hasn't done that much damage. Just keep on healing. Yeah, Nakai, if you can keep smashing up War Hydras, because he's got a bonus versus larger, that's good. Alright, if I. Oh, there we go, we got the armor losses. We did it! We did it. I think it really helped that we fought in the water. It would have made all of their infantry fight like shit as well, because they're not aquatic. Uh, where are you? If you could take out this Hydra, that would be great. How about Nakai take out Rakath so he gets no experience? Okay, there's no point healing any of the Croxagors at this point. Oh god, they're stuck. Because... Can't recover their casualties, and they're just going to auto-heal to full. At least per a live entity. If we're going to heal anyone, we should heal Nakai and um, the Skink Oracle. So this guy here got uh, 35 kills. Nakai, Nakai actually didn't get that many kills in. Did do 3,200 damage. Uh, but yeah, just providing that buff in there. Because he was like right in the center of that blob. And the all the Croxagors did a great job. Because we fought in the water where they were ad advantageous to them. We fought together, kept their leadership in order. And also um, gave them buffs with this. I think it also really helped to pop down the, uh, the flock of dooms that we did. Just to start on those infantry. Because I don't think we're going to reach this. Just too slow. Trying to do a little bit extra damage to it with that. And it missed. Alright, we got fireball. Uh, I think I'd much rather heal. Nah, it doesn't look like we're going to catch them. But it does look like we're going to get Nakai. Uh, pff, uh, Rakath. Hang on. Well, maybe not. Stop dancing around, Nakai. Get him. Come on, come on. Couple more hits. One more hit, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, you suck. You suck. This wouldn't have happened if you weren't on Force March. Alright, you know why we took a Pyrrhic victory here? Because we lost more than half of our army in terms of numbers. You always take a Pyrrhic victory if you lose loads of numbers. Yeah. But we didn't actually take that much damage comparatively. Like, this should probably have been a close victory. Um, at least in terms of, like, the health bars. But, yeah, it's because these ones here have so many entities compared to this. Did you know, if you have, like, an army full of single entities, like, 19 single entities, and you bring... Let's say you're playing green skins. You bring... 19 Black Orc Big Bosses, and one Gobbo unit. And you send that Gobbo unit into battle, and it gets completely wiped out. And then the other Black Orc Big Bosses take no damage. You'll take a Pyrrhic victory. Just because of that one unit, because the game's like, Oh, you lost 90% of your troops. It's like, yeah, but it's only one unit. Ooh. Money is good, but I really feel like, given your situation, you probably should try to heal. Because you don't want to get attacked again. Alright, let's do a little bit of an overview of the situation and um, offer us some advice. So that he can actually continue the campaign without getting wrecked again. But yeah, don't get me wrong, Nakai's campaign is complete garbage. It's abandoned where? It's probably the most abandoned campaign that Creative Assembly's ever done. They just they just were like, oh, this campaign sucks, let's just forget it even exists. It's had no updates whatsoever. <laughs> Lizard men really are in many ways abandoned where. Even with the latest DLC, they're like, eh. We threw him a bone, but it wasn't much of a bone. Alright, so yeah. What I don't understand how you got into this position here. How did you force march to here? You had to go past Marienburg to get there. You have like if you have a look at the map here, you didn't come down through this way. You you forced march down here. Why? Why did you do that? If you have a look at your diplomacy. All right, so you're clearly coming to invade Rakath. 
Well, on the plus side, that's pretty good. You get blood blood reveler for um for Nakai. Why did you do this? I don't understand. Yeah, I wanted to lure him out to attack me in a situation that's really unfavorable for me. <laughs> well, you should just put your campaign at risk by doing that. It's your only army. I just don't understand why you did this. I, li I cannot make sense of it. It makes no strategic sense. Why didn't you land here? Okay. And why aren't you sending these fuckwits around here to scout? You got all these, like, I get it, okay, the heroes, you want to train them up, right? But what you should do is you should have landed here. You could have done that, like, three turns ago, assuming that you came from there. Uh, you could have landed here, sent the scouts out, and been like, okay, there's a Rakath army, there's a Rakath army. Let me guess, you got Lightning Strike. Yeah, so you're fine there. You got it ages ago. So you could have been there. Rakath would have seen you. Um, you had your scouts. You could have gone to Ambush Dance, wait for the right time to strike. And then when you want to make the attack on Corone, then you attach the heroes into the army. Like, this just makes... Fucking no sense whatsoever. Absolutely none. God damn it. Like, for a, like if this was a normal campaign difficulty, I'd be like, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing, that's fair enough. But this is legendary difficulty. I like, kind of expect you to not be a, you know, not be on a basic level of, like, what the hell is this? I don't get it. Uh, well, you know what? I've given you a second chance to your campaign. I may be a little bit mean about it, but, you know, it's because I don't understand what you're doing. It's very confusing. It's just like, you've got a very clear, very obvious landing point right here where they would not have been able to attack you because the response time from Corone to there is like two turns. Like, you just, you could have landed there and they just can't respond to you. And it gives you time to set up, set up ambushes, launch attacks, lightning strike, whatever. Not get caught and forced march out in the water in the middle of fucking nowhere for no reason. Like, why are you here? Unless there was like, like, a sh like maybe there was a shipwreck there and you're like, Ooh, oh no, oh, hang on. Yeah, that's what you did. That's exactly what you did. There was the materials at sea. But instead of focusing on what you should have been doing, you, you... Oh, look, a little prizy glittering thing out of the water. And you nearly got you killed. Also, this is useless for you. Because <laughs> construction costs minus 30% for all buildings, all regions. That only applies to settled factions. Income from all buildings, that doesn't apply to you because you don't make any income from buildings. Okay, that doesn't apply to your vassal income. So that's fucking useless. So yeah, because that usually comes with six turns, so uh, that's what he did. He was like, coming down this way, and he was like, hmm, should I land at Marienburg? Oh no, here's some pretty things! And he ran over here, and was like, ooh, force march. And that's what he did. Fucking hell. God damn. <laughs> anyway, hopefully that's lesson learned. Bloody hell. <laughs> that, that's, that shouldn't make me as angry as it does. But you just should have ignored that. Landed here. You could have been done with this by now. You could have been taking a dump on Rakath's face and he would have been loving it and you could have had some more territory and not been in this shit situation but anyway lesson learned fix it up from there and you know move forward anyway that's the end of this one here guys hope you enjoyed hope you learned something don't do what this guy did because fucking stupid and i uh, appreciate you and i'll see you next time fuckers bye